In this video, I'm gonna give you an overview of the build and setup on my right wing Zcon. Basically, this wing is a recon with an extended wingspan. So the recon is 46 inch and this is 56 inch. So basically, it's a similar wingspan to a Zephyr, but with the same airfoil as a recon. And I think that's where it gets the name Zcon. Chris said that he designed this to be a fast and efficient cruiser. Uh, my flights are usually around 25 minutes long with mixed flying. I'd like to do a lot of full throttle flying. But if I try and fly this thing efficiently, I have seen a flight time of 1 hour and 15 minutes covering 72 kilometers. That's with 8000 milliamp of 5S. Before I start the setup overview, I just wanted to say I'm going to put links to all of the parts and all of the build materials in the video description below. However, I can't put a link to this wing itself as you can't buy it anywhere. The only way you can get hold of one of these is if you email Chris directly. So his email address will be in the video description. However, I will put a link to the right wing recon on ReadyMade RC so you can take a look at the kit and what's included. So my plan for this build was to keep it really nice and clean this nice bright orange and I wanted to try and make sure the wires were as hidden as possible and also the antennas were out of view. So we'll go straight into the setup overview now starting at the back here. So we have a badass 2826 1030 kV spinning an APC 9x6 which is currently mounted to the stock aluminium motor mount but I do plan to put something a bit more like this on at some point. In the electronics bay here we have the Skywalker 80 amp ESC and I have a Matek F765 flight controller which is running iNav. You can see the cable for the GPS here so my GPS is just hidden under this little hatch there. I'm running high tech uh, it's the HS225 Metal Gear servos and the right wing bulletproof horns. In the bay at the front here, that's basically just space for the batteries. At the front we have the Foxeer Predator 4 FPV camera and the DJI Osmo action goes in here. And that's my custom designed 3D printed nose. At the back we have some 12 volt orange LEDs, which are pretty cool in low light. And for the other parts, I'm just going to turn this wing over as they are on the underside. We have the Dragon Link receiver here and my antenna right out on the wingtip. And over on the other wing, I have the Partum 800 milliwatt 1.3 gigahertz VTX. And that is the antenna, which is a true RC singularity side feed, which is, as you can see, buried in the wing and painted orange to match the rest of it. Over here I've stuck a couple of screws in for the CG which on this is nine and a quarter to nine and a half inches back from the point of the original nose. Next we're going to take a look at my build process on this wing. These don't come with any instructions so there's just so many different ways you can build these things and everyone does it differently from what I've seen So I'm just gonna go through my method. I'm not saying it's the best way But it's the way I did it and hopefully it helps some of you watching this anyway So the kit comes with the two wing halves you get the corex pieces for the equipment bays and For the winglets and the vertical stabilizers you've got your aluminium motor mount and also you get a ton of these fiberglass spars so anyone that's kind of not used to uh, a right wing build might find it strange. You don't get any thick carbon fiber spars. You just get this. And if I just show you how flexible this is, see that bends just real nice and easy. So these are the only things that are actually giving this strength using the I-beam technique, which I'll show you. I'll go through that anyway in the build. So the other parts that come with this kit, which are really important as part of the build, is you get the two sleeves that these wing halves were cut from. So what we do is we get a nice flat workspace and we get the sleeves down and make sure the top side is up. And then what you can do is on the sleeve, you can cut along 
the top half uh, where it's joined and then you can take the top half away leaving the bottom side for you to place the two wing halves into while you're gluing and putting spars in so you can make sure that it's nice and true and straight as you go. So the first step for me with this build was gluing the two wing halves together um, which is a little bit more complicated than it sounds because what you've got to do is you've got to cut the aluminium motor mount in and you've got to fit one of these fiberglass spars through a channel in the middle of the two wings all at the same time. So because the channel inside the two wings is a lot wider than the diameter of these spars, what we need to do is we need to use Gorilla Glue mixed with white glue or PVA. And what this does is once it's inside there, it, it starts to expand and it fills that gap so that it's nice and strong and got a good grip of this spar inside there. The white spar that is designed to go in this channel is actually a lot longer than the channel itself. So the first thing you need to do is you can put it in both wings and try and push them together. And then what we do is you measure how far apart the gap is once they're both pushed as far as they can together. And, and that's the amount that you'll need to cut off this bar. Then the next thing is you need to make sure you cut in for your aluminium motor mount and you're ready to start gluing these two halves together. So when you're gluing these two wing halves together, there's only a small amount of foam that's actually gonna to be touching from both halves. So you've got a little bit here and there'll be some at the front here. Obviously I've cut mine away since because of the nose, but you have a small section that joins together here. And this section here where the electronic space are, you will have foam there. You obviously don't need to glue the two halves of foam together. So really what you're doing here when you're gluing this and this together, the foam, is more for convenience and holding it in place than anything. The reason that I try and do this all at the same time, so putting the motor mount in, the white spar and gluing the two wing halves together at the same time is because if you go and glue the two halves together and put the spar in and then, and then do the aluminium motor mount later, my only concern was that when I cut this in, I would actually be cutting in and touching the spar because the spar is in a very similar place. So um, doing it all at the same time meant I had uh, time to kind of maneuver everything to make sure it is in place and not interfering with each other. This process for joining the two wing halves is going to involve E6000 and also the Gorilla Glue mixed with white glue. Firstly, I work with the E6000 because this, it doesn't dry as quickly or set as quickly, so you can maneuver things, whereas the Gorilla Glue is going to expand pretty quickly once it's in place, so you want to work quickly with that stuff. So first of all, where the two wing halves meet, I cover that in E6000 and also where the aluminium motor mount is going in, I put E6000 on this. Once that's in place, I get the Gorilla Glue and white glue mixed together. The two wing halves up and I pour the Gorilla Glue into the channel. Um, once that's poured into the channel, then that's when we can slot the white spar in, get the two wing halves together and make sure the aluminium motor mount is in place. With that all in place, I put some weights on the top and left that to dry for 24 hours. Remember while all of this sets and the glue is drying, it's placed on top of the sleeves so that we know that the wing is true and straight. Now that the two halves are glued together, the next thing I did was cut out the foam for these electronics bays so it's straight through, there's just a hole through it. Uh, and then I went about fitting all of these fiberglass spars. So there's quite a few of them. Um, and it's exactly the same on the top as the bottom, uh, which is the I-beam method that Chris uses on most of his wings now. Um, so you can see there is one along here, there are two along here, another one the same on this side, and then there's two smaller ones at the front here, so just along there and along here. So the method for installing these basically, you'll already be able to see a little indent where they go, and what I did was if you get a nice fresh snap razor, and I used a big metal ruler, and I just cut along the channel, just maybe about you know half a centimeter in. Uh, and then what we do is you just, once you've cut these to the right length, I just push these in and I put CA glue over the top of them. 
once you've got all of the spars glued in on the top and the underside of the wing the next thing i did was install this divider of the two electronics bays which is also a, a big part of the strength of the wing apparently um so the thing that the reason this is a bit tricky is because you can feed the spars through inside the corex on the top and then there's also one along the bottom so what i did was i made sure these little channels were cut on the top and the bottom of the wing with the knife ready i fed the spar through the top half first and then pushed this in and seated it in and then on the underside kind of had to pull it down a bit so that it could feed the spar through the underside and then obviously that gets pushed into the channels that you've created with the knife again seal this up with ca glue this is the underside of the wing and the next thing I did was install the floor or the bottom of the electronics bay. So you get tons of these fiberglass spars with a kit, more than you need, so you've got plenty spare. So what I decided to do was to use them to reinforce this and I've added four extra spars. So one here, one here, one there and one there. And what I've done is I've also made sure it goes through the tunnels inside the corex. And then I've just glued it in and cut the channels in the same way I did with all the other spars. Um, and obviously then what I did was I laminated over it. I've seen some people glass over this and do all sorts of reinforcements. Uh, this was just the method I decided to go with. And I've been flying this wing all year and <laughs> I've done tons of flights of it. And this has stayed absolutely solid. Uh, no signs of that coming away or uh, getting damaged. Next I cut into the wings for the electronics. So I have my VTX out on one wing and the antenna is here. And the reason for this placement was basically this was as far out as I could go with this antenna and still bury it in the wing without it sticking out. So that's the reason to put that there. Out on the other wing, I have my Dragon Link. And at the time this was the only antenna I had. So the reason for this placement was I wanted to put this out on the wing tip and this is this one here because that's basically where the antenna reached to and you can see here I cut into the wing here so that the winglet could still fit flush and cover that I don't use an antenna tube on the bottom of the uh, dragon link antenna I I never get low RSSI and I fly behind stuff and out to about 15 kilometers no problem the other thing I did was I cut out the sections for the servos and then also wired those in. So I had the wires coming along here, I cut a channel with the knife. And then what I did was I used this foam cutting tool, which just melts the foam. I pushed this through to melt into the electronics bay. Next, I cut out a section of the nose, the right width to install my 3D printed nose. This is printed with PLA and it's glued in place using E6000 again. So what I did was I designed this uh, nose with a little ridge along the back here so that this bay cover could glue onto this as well as the foam around here. The next part was to install these electronics lids and if we open this up here you'll see you do need to cut out this little section here so that the lid can close. It's already all marked up, just like these bays are that I didn't use. You can see the line around there where it shows you where you meant to cut. So you just take that little bit out so that the lid can close. In terms of gluing this in place, what I've done is I've ran one of these spars through the inside here and cut it into the two wing halves, the same as usual, uh, and glued that in. But then what I've done is I've glued this in round here, glued it into the 3D printed nose and round here and then on the inside taking a knife along here so that this is basically hinged. The reason I put the spar in this placement here is because the batteries are a bit big for the bay and this is where they try to push it up so I thought having the spar in place here would just give it that extra strength so that the batteries don't pop the lid off basically. This rear bay is similar, if I open this one up, again I've cut it along here to hinge it and I've also put a fiberglass bar inside through the corex there and glued it in place 
and then this is glued onto the foam and also along here. So once I've done that, and I've also cut out all the electronics, I took the servos and I took the VTX and receiver all back out and it was ready for painting. My method for painting this is to mask off the aluminium motor mount and also the black corex and then give the entire wing a coating of this 3M90 spray adhesive. So this is highly recommended by Chris and most of the guys that build these hot wire cut uh, right wings because the foam is very porous and without using this you need to use a lot of paint because you just go into all the gaps. Um, but the other thing is what happens is when you laminate this, when you apply the heat, it kind of melts the glue and the paint together, which basically means it gives this really nice addition for the uh, laminate. So it sticks really, really well. Thanks to this stuff, I think after the first coat of this, it looks absolutely brilliant, but I did do a second coat just in case. The other thing I painted was also these elevons. It's actually something I forgot to mention when I was listing all the kits that you get when you purchase this wing. So you do get balsa elevons with this. Um, before I painted them, I also did taper them. So my method for this is really simple. So these were rectangle. What I did was I just measured the length and put a mark just here right in the middle. And then I also measured the width and then also put another mark on the middle. And then I drew a line between these two marks and then cut it with a metal ruler using a fresh snap razor. So then these were just painted using black paint. I didn't use 3M90 for these. Uh, and then they were laminated. On the top here, I decided to have the GPS out in the wing away from the interference of the electronics in the main bay there. So I just cut a small uh, slot there for the GPS uh, and then just cut a little channel for the cable um, and covered it with some of this Corex and I just cut one of the hatches that's applied with the kit to the right size, the same size as the GPS basically. And then I actually did the same the other side even though there's nothing under there, I just did it for symmetry basically. Something I haven't mentioned is that also there are four other electronics bays which I decided not to use just because I haven't got I haven't got enough electronics to fill them basically, I don't need these extra spaces. But it's great that they're there for those people that do have a lot of equipment to install. Um, and also, you know, the some are far forward and some are further back and Chris has done that so that you can quite easily move your equipment to manipulate the CG on the wing. Now that the wing was painted, I went to install the electronics. So that's my servos, the GPS, my receiver on that wing and my video transmitter and antenna on this wing and also all of the wiring into the electronics compartments um, and also gluing on the little Corex hatches so on top of the GPS uh, the blanking plate there and also on the underside for the servos because the hole for those does go straight through. Between the servo and the bottom piece of Corex I did fit a little bit of foam just to fill the gap. So I like to install the electronics before laminating because I like to cover over them and laminating is the next step and I do that using four pieces of laminate. So one, two, and then three and four on the underside. And the way I do it is I laminate the underside of the wing first. So that is on the inside here, but I come right to the edge and I don't come out over the top. Um, once I've done the underside, we start on the top and the top piece I make bigger than the wing because what I do is I wrap it round underneath and cover over uh, maybe about an inch on the underside so it overlaps and the reason I do that is so that the seam where they join although it's barely visible I like it to be on the underside so the top looks nice and clean. I'm not too sure exactly what spec the laminating film was but it's the right wing stuff on Ready Made RC and there'll be a link in the video description to that. Then there's just a few more things to finish off. Uh, next um, the Elevons. I basically connected them to the wing using the Z hinge method uh, I won't go into too much detail on that, but Chris has done a video on that if you're interested. Uh, I installed the right wing bulletproof horns and rod set. And then I used E6000 to glue the winglets onto the end there. I also used E6000 to glue these vertical stabilizers in place. Uh, the first thing I did was actually glued them, putting glue uh, where there was contact. And then after that, once it had dried, I kind of ran a bead along the joins around here down both sides. <clears throat> the reason I use E6000 
is just because it's quite flexible and it has a real strong hold. So it's not as brittle as something like hot glue. I also used E6000 to glue my LEDs on the back here. Um, and then next it was basically making sure I got all of the cables into the electronics bay and hooking everything up. So the ESC is just velcroed in place and the flight controller is held in place using a 3D part that I designed. You glue the base in and then you just screw this part on top to hold it in place. Just means you can remove it without having to rip any glue out or anything like that. And the reason everything is as far back as it will go is because this is a fairly nose heavy build so I needed to shift as much weight back where possible. Um, for this lid, there's just a few little magnets here and in here just to hold that down. It probably doesn't even need them to be honest with you because that's not going to open uh, when it's flying in the wind. And then in this front bay what I did was I'd still got all the foam that was originally in here and I cut a front section out and shaped it to the batteries so that basically when I install these two batteries they fit in there perfectly. They don't need any velcro on the bottom um, they just fit in there snug and they don't want to move side to side or forwards or backwards. The reason I did that and didn't use Velcro on the bottom is because you basically you need all the space you can get. Mostly for the front one. The front one goes in without any Velcro. My rear one has some Velcro on and that goes there. Last thing was to install the motor and after a few flights I noticed that I lost a couple of screws off the back here. So it's a good job I noticed that. Um, but what I did was I put thread lock on all of them now and since then they've, they've stayed nice and tight. Okay so that's it for the build overview, hopefully that wasn't too long. I uh, tried to include the whole build without making it too detailed and boring, but uh, let's cut to some footage of this thing in action. Thanks for watching.